tonight on Y News. The Department of Justice files tax evasion charges against Mighty Corporation. Suspects Camp offers 300,000 peso bounty for the original copy of the CCTV footage of Sunday's road rage incident in Cebu. President Rodrigo Duterte meets and greets overseas Filipino workers in Thailand. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA plans to regulate the window tint of private cars. Internet giant Facebook moves to root out a fake news on social media accounts. And after four attempts in the championship, PNP responders dominated UNTV Cop Season 5. Why News begins now. From the UNTV News and Rescue Command Center, this is Why News with Angelo Castro III and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Bureau of Internal Revenue today filed a 9 billion tax suit against cigarette maker Mighty Corporation. A lawyer for the company says they welcome the filing of the charges. Rodrik Mendoza will tell us why. Cigarette company Mighty Corporation is now being sued for tax evasion by the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Complaints for violation of sections 263 and 265 of the tax code were filed today at the Department of Justice against the company and its responsible officers, including Alexander Wong Cho King, the Vice President for External Affairs. BIR alleges that the company did not pay the corresponding excise taxes on its cigarette products, which were seized in San Simon, Pampanga. Investigations revealed that the tax stamps on almost 90% of more than 33 million packs of Mighty Cigarettes were fake. BIR claims Mighty Corporation has an estimated tax liability of 9.5 billion pesos. A lawyer for the company says they welcome the filing of the complaint as it gives them opportunity to clear their names and show that they did not violate any tax law. Wong Chu King has already met with Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre and promised to settle the tax liability of his company. Mighty Corporation is also being investigated for alleged cigarette smuggling activities. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The camp of road rage suspect David Lim Jr. is giving 300,000 peso reward to anyone who could provide the original copy of the video footage of Sunday's road altercation that resulted in the shooting of Efraim Nunyad. Deb Riveral will tell us why. The camp of David Lim Jr. is now searching for the original copy of the video footage of the road rage incident in Cebu on Sunday. Lim's camp says they are ready to give 300,000 pesos to whoever can provide the original copy. It can be recalled that the camp of Lim claims that the videos of the incident, now going viral on social media, are adulterated. Lim's lawyer attorney June Salatadri says if the original video footage is in the possession of the camp of the victim, Efraim Nunyal Muntabo, they have to release it so that the truth will come out. Uh, of, of course, in our part, uh, there is that... Uh there is that video, we will just ask them, uh, is this the real video footage? Under the rules and evidence, if you are in position of that, you have to present that. If not, then that is suppression of evidence. David Lim Jr. is temporarily detained at the Cebu City Police Office while waiting for the resolution of the case. Meanwhile, Cebu City Police Senior Superintendent Joel Doria denies giving special treatment to the suspect. Actually, ang sa mga ating kabayan, kung nakikita lang special treatment dyan, ay nasa kanila naman yun kasi opinion nila yan. But then, sa atin naman kasi, we see to it na pantay-pantay ang binibigay nating uh, protection sa ating mga kababayan naman. Lim is now facing charges of frustrated murder and illegal possession of ammunition. Beb Beveral, UNTV News and Rescue, Cebu. Authorities are hunting down the suspects in the killing of a cop last Monday night in Ligao City, Albay. Robbie Di Guzman will tell us why. The Philippines 
Philippine National Police or PNP Albay currently has a lead on who are possibly behind the killing of PO1 Ruben Payadiad Jr. in Ligao City, Albay. Two men shot Payadiad dead last Monday night while the victim was on duty. The victim exchanged fire with the suspects but he was hit in the head that resulted in his immediate death. Police Chief Inspector Arthur Gomez says suspects might be members of the New People's Army or NPA. Gomez further says Payadiad was offered to join the NPA before he entered the police force. Another witness na lumutang na nakapagsabi na uh, one time nag-operate sila about illegal gambling bundok. So yung uh, dinakit nila is uh, allegedly merong uh, kamag-anak na kapatid natin sa bundok. So possibly ganun. The family of the victim calls for the immediate resolution of the case on the killing of their loved one. Wala pong magigyan ng posisyon ng pagkamatay ng kapito. Sana po kasi kasuhin naman po ng ligaw PNP. Robbie de Guzman, UNCV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Philippine National Police stands by its statement that the now-based Maute Group has presence in Metro Manila despite the denial of the armed forces of the Philippines. Grace Cassin will tell us why. The Philippine National Police or PNP will not retract its statement on the alleged presence of the Maute Group in Metro Manila. PNP Public Information Office Chief Senior Superintendent Junardo Carlos says they're continuously verifying the said information following the arrest of an alleged member of the group identified as Nasip Ibrahim. We are to believe that there's a presence of the cell group and we are still going to look deeply into this group. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, however, says that based on its intelligence monitoring, they have no information yet of the presence of the Maute Group in Metro Manila. So there is no contradiction with the PNP headquarters on that account because at the time of the media event of the, headquart of the PNP headquarters, the Armed Forces did not possess the information and the data that was, that was necessary to make a more uh, extensive statement, okay? So we could not link anything or conclude anything until we have the information. However, AFP is not disregarding the possibility that some of its members are already here in Metro Manila. We say that we cannot discount the possibility of Mauti Group or only any of their cohorts uh, being out to conduct diversionary attacks in Metro Manila and other key cities for that matter. In response, the PNP says it respects AFP's statement. However, the National Police stands by its claim that the arrest of Ibrahim is based on their monitoring and through investigation. They're saying it's based on their monitoring. Wala. Ito po, naging resulta po kasi ito nung investigation. It appeared that there is someone who is providing safe haven for a cell that is uh, coming here. Ibrahim was arrested in his house in Barangay Colyat, Quezon City. Authorities are now looking for their prime target, Hamil Tawili, another alleged member of the Maute Group. Grace Kasin, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. The Philippine National Police assures that the Criminal Investigation and Detection Group or CIDG Region 8 will not give special treatment to former police official Superintendent Marvin Marcos. Marcos is temporarily detained at the CIDG Region 8 facility, while the Court and the Bureau of Jail Management and Phenology are yet to decide on the appropriate detention facility for Marcos and his co-accused in the killing of former Albuera Mayor Rolando Espinosa. PNP spokesperson Senior Superintendent Leonardo Carlos said they are leaving the decision where to detain the suspects up to the court. Uh, they are accused, they are suspect in, a, in, a, in an incident, and they will treat it as such. Senator Alan Peter Cayetano explains the need for the Duterte administration to weigh in the strategies recommended by Associate Justice Antonio Carpio to address the Philippines' territorial dispute with China. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Alan Peter Cayetano gives assurance that President Rodrigo Duterte has no plans of giving up the Philippines' territory. 
This has been the Senator's response to Supreme Court Associate Justice Antonio Carpio's pronouncement that the President should never make statements that may seem to hint that the Philippines is surrendering its sovereignty over its rightful territories in the West Philippine Sea. Let me just assure Justice Carpio and uh, you know Filipinos who are watching over the West Philippine uh, Sea issue uh, that the President is doing everything he can and he will not give up a single square inch no, or square centimeter of uh, our territory. Cayetano says he recognizes the contribution of Carpio to defend the rights of the country over its territory in the West Philippine Sea. However, the Senator noted that the strategies or option recommended by the Supreme Court Justice like the fight of a diplomatic protest against China, sending of Navy patrols to Scarborough Shoal, asking the United States to help declare the area as territory of the Philippines and accept U.S. offer for a joint naval patrol in South China Sea. We need people like uh, uh, Justice Carpio to continue to, to guide, um, to ask hard questions. But if you look at the five steps that he wants, uh, some of them are purely legal, some are purely diplomatic, but some are a matter of strategy and geopolitics diba? that the administration has to weigh at this period in time. Because what could have been valid during the last six years and good for the country in the last six years? Because when you implement a strategy, iba yung first five, iba yung last two minutes. Eh. Meanwhile, Acting Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo says the Department of Foreign Affairs has yet to determine the action it will take on the reported plan of China to build structures on one of the disputed territories in the South China Sea, the Scarborough or Panatag Shoal. Manalo says no further action will be taken pending China's response to the Philippines government's request for a clarification on the matter. Mr. Scarpio has, has uh, been very involved in this issue. I think he's very knowledgeable and he has proposed certain options, but those options will only swing in under certain conditions. But, uh, as of now, that's why uh, it's really very difficult to, to comment on them. And all we can really do is await for China's clarification on the reported plan. Cayetano, the rumored next DFA secretary, meanwhile explains his reasons for talking about Philippines' foreign affairs and his side on the reports that he will be the next DFA secretary. The senator explains he has more freedom to talk than other officials under the executive branch. He stresses that his talking has nothing to do with him being the next DFA secretary. Currently, he is the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations. I'm more free to talk about foreign relations being in the, ex in the legislative branch, mas nakakapagsalita talaga yung uh, outside the DFA because yung sa DFA, each and every word na sabihin yan ay screen scrutinize ng lahat ng diplomats around the world. So kahit sino, kahit kung ako or ibang tao malagay sa DFA, limited din talaga pwedeng sabihin. No? Cayetano also says he is preparing for whatever lies ahead, adding that he's leaving to the president the decision on whether or not to appoint him as the next DFA secretary. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Bangkok, Thailand. President Rodrigo Duterte caps his two-day official visit to Thailand with a meeting with the Filipino community. From Bangkok, Thailand, Rosa Licoz is back to tell us why live. Go ahead, Rosalie. Alain. Yes, good evening, Jego. As early as 1 in the afternoon, our fellow Filipinos have been waiting here at the Royal Thai Navy headquarters for the Filipino community gathering to be led by President Rodrigo Duterte. According to the Philippine Embassy here in Thailand, less than 2,000 Filipinos registered for the event. More than 14,000 Filipinos are staying here in Thailand, and most of them are English teachers and staying in Bangkok. President Duterte is set to give, to give his public statement for the Filipinos in Thailand at 8 p.m. here in this country. While waiting for the president, a pre-program activity is held in which various groups and individuals render their special number through song and dance. Throughout the program, Filipinos are chanting the name of President President Duterte and waving the Philippine flag. Everyone is excited to meet the popular president personally.
At talagang mahal na mahal kong ating presidente. At hindi pa siya nagdi-declare na tatakbo ng president. Ako ay nangangampanya na sa mga eksitan. Kaya mabuhay ang ating presidente. Sana. Proud po ako sa ating presidente kasi ngayon lang po nagkaroon ng presidente na talagang pinaglalaban ang mga Pilipino. Kanya kami. Pilipinas. Sa Mindanao, sa Bisay, sa Sulusong, mabuhay si Dr. Lee. The Philcom gathering is the last activity of President Duterte in his two-day official visit before flying back to Manila past 9 this evening, Thailand Standard Time. Thailand is the last ASEAN member country visited by President. Anytime soon, the President and his cabinet members will arrive here at the venue. That is our latest live here from Bangkok, Thailand. Back to you, Jeko. Thank you, Rosalie Coast, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. In connection to that report, China's Foreign Ministry on Wednesday has denied reports that China will begin preparatory work this year for an environmental monitoring station on disputed Scarborough Shoal in the South China Sea. China's Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Hua Chunying says China recognizes the importance of South China Sea in the region's ecology. Furthermore, she says China respects the improving relation between the Philippines and China. Tsushi the Department of Tourism and the Department of Trade and Industry believes that balancing trade relations between Philippines and Thailand will have positive impact on tourism and likely to generate jobs for Filipinos. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Right now, uh, while Thailand is our sixth largest trading partner, they have a trade surplus. In other words, mas malaki pong export nila sa atin kesa yung export natin sa kanila. And what they will try to do is balance it. DTI Secretary Ramon Lopez believes strengthening trade cooperations with Thailand would bring positive impacts to the country, especially on tourism and employment. Yesterday, three trade agreements with the Thailand government have been signed, which includes strengthening cooperations in science and technology, agriculture and tourism, which would help generate jobs for Filipinos in the future. Thailand's tourism ministry also agreed to help the Philippines in increasing its tourist arrivals. According to DOT Secretary Juan Dateo, the Thailand government likewise promised to pursue having regular flights to Cebu and Davao City from Bangkok. Mas maraming Filipinos pupunta ng Thai, Thailand. So, yun yung agreement namin. More flights and uh, more tourists to come. Meanwhile, the tourism secretary asked the media to tone down on issues pertaining to extrajudicial killings because highlighting the issue greatly affects the image of the country and makes it more difficult to attract tourists and investors. Yung mga statesman, statement na ganun, it really, um, nahihirapan kaming isel ang Philippines. So I hope uh, we could um, compare. And even this not only refer to uh, Lenny, uh, VP Lenny, but also to the media to please um, medyo itone down natin yung extrajudicial killing. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, will study the possibility of regulating the window tint of private cars in Metro Manila. Joe Anano will tell us why. Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA wants to review a new law which prohibits motorists from using dark tint grades in their vehicle windows. The car tint of a vehicle serves as protection from damaging sun rays. The MMDA is now studying how to strictly implement the law so as to weed out and easily apprehend Colorum vehicles operating in Metro Manila. 
MMDA officer in charge and general manager Tomas Orbus says such a move would also help with the strict implementation of the Anti-Distracted Driving Act. The said law prohibits the use of any communication device like cell phones while driving to prevent accidents. But natin kailangan i-review yan. Number one po, yung safety ng ating uh, public, riding public. Hindi mo alam na sa loob ng sasakyan. Number two, yung po pagpapatupad ng ano, anti-texting, hindi ho natin mapatupad dahil hindi natin nakikita. Number three, yung anti-colorum po. The MMDA is now coordinating with car manufacturers regarding the said plan to determine the recommendations on the most appropriate and safest car tint grade for vehicle windows. MMDA's partner in this is the Land Transportation Office and PNP Highway Patrol Group. The agency targets to implement the said plan in June. However, like other regulations, foreign dignitaries and other government officials might exempt it for security purposes. With the proposal, the MMDA is also pushing for the creation of a carpooling system to lessen the number of vehicles traversing traffic-prone areas. Gusto na rin natin i-encourage ang carpooling. And we will have a carpooling uh, program wherein uh, you will be exempted from any volume reduction measures such as number coding pag ikaw po ay naka-carpool. Based on the agency's estimates, there are 2.5 million vehicles traversing Metro Manila every day. There had been a proposal before to ban vehicles plying through EDSA if it contains only one to two passengers. Joan Nano, UNC Venus and Rescue, Quezon City. Next on Why News. Different labor groups are planning to conduct a mass indignation rally next week. ASEAN senior information officials convene to promote effective communication channels within the ASEAN region. Why News will be right back. News would like to thank the following Engine Industries Grand Eagle Cookware Darwin D. Trading Medical Supplies 7M Construction and Development Corporation Energy Tech Engineering Services and Trading Elpan Consultancy Services Corporation Summit One Business Solutions Incorporated 347 School and Office Supplies Incorporated labor groups are planning to conduct a mass indignation rally next week. Mondaxon will tell us why. Thousands of members of different labor groups are set to conduct a massive indignation rally to oppose the new department order on contractualization issued by the Department of Labor and Employment. Labor groups plan to hold the protest rally near the Malacanang Palace in Menjola, Manila next week. Now it's time to organize on the ground, to organize a movement uh, founded on this particular struggle, but then it will open a lot of other issues that, will be, that besets the uh, uh, Filipino laborer right now. Labor groups who plan to join the protest are employees from the Manila Hotel, Fortune Tobacco, Victory Liner, Arms Corps, Isitan Mall, UCP Panda, Piazzo Cavitex, and Chinese General Hospital. The groups argues that President Duterte is not being true to his word when he said that he will put an end to contractualization and accuse the president of using this as a campaign propaganda. Kung niloloko lang nila tayo itong play ni Bellio at saka ni Duterte at least meron pa siyang meron pang opening in order to talk to uh, the president because he said during that uh, dialogue with nag with the Nagkaisa Labor Coalition leaders in Malacañang he categorically said, wala nang agency, agency. Meanwhile, the Labor Department dispels fears that the department order will not be implemented properly. 
In a statement by the Labor Department, Secretary Bellio said that they have deputized labor groups to conduct inspections that will ensure establishments and companies are complying with the department order. Bellio also clarified that he does not have the authority to stop contractualization, and this can be done through legislative process in the Congress. The President has not issued any statement regarding his earlier promise of ending contractualization in the country. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD confirms that some Pantawid Pamilya beneficiaries are offering their cash cards for a loan. In the so-called Katok cash card held by the DSWD National Capital Region, 15 of the 61 beneficiaries they visited were caught committing the said scheme. The Katok cash card has begun last year in Valenzuela and Caloocan. Those caught offering their cash cards for a loan are issued with written warnings. They are also reminded of the agreement they entered into as 4 peace beneficiaries. Senior information officials of the 10 ASEAN member states aim to establish stronger and effective communication within the ASEAN region. Marge Pelayo will tell us why. Based on the survey of the ASEAN community building effort, in 2012, 80% of the population in the region had already heard of ASEAN or Association of Southeast Asian Nation. However, only 24% is aware of its importance. Thus, delegates of the 15th ASEAN Senior Information Officials Meeting are expected to tackle, among others, possible strategies to strengthen the promotion and awareness of ASEAN in the community. To effectively communicate and promote ASEAN's meaning and identity, so that our citizens not only gain awareness of our organization, but become inspired to participate and support the community to build an ASEAN that is truly people-centered. The event formally opened today in Bacolod City. More than 50 delegates from the 10 ASEAN member countries are in attendance. The event is being led by Presidential Communications Operations Office Undersecretary Noel George Puyat. Among the participants are senior representatives from the Ministry of Information of the 10-member ASEAN nations, as well as officers from the ASEAN Secretariat. Also attending the meeting is DILG Secretary Mike Sueno, together with local government officials. Sueno emphasizes the importance of establishing a strong communication channel within the ASEAN region. Information must be part of the backbone that helps our societies move as one body and strengthening communication channels to increase awareness, understanding, and appreciation or approval. The delegates are also set to create recommendations and work programs that would strengthen the media sector of member states. Marge Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Senate of the Philippines will prioritize the passage of 10 proposed bills identified during its consultative meeting with the Presidential Legislative Li Liaison Office yesterday. These include the proposed tax reform program, the Unified National Identification System Act, and the Security of Tenure Bill. According to Senate Secretary Lucardo Barbo, the two panels have agreed to work together for the immediate passage of the said bills given the hectic schedule of Congress. Meanwhile, four of the ten priority bills are already in advanced legislation in Congress, and they are the National Transport Act, the Utilization of the Coconut Levy Fund, the Occupational Safety and Health Hazards Compliance Act, and the National Mental Health Act. Former Makati Mayor Elenita Binay files a motion to travel before the Sandigan Bayan. Binay asked the, the anti-graph court to allow her to have a vacation to Osaka and Tokyo, Japan from April 1 to April 8. Based on the former mayor's motion, she is asking the court to allow her to withdraw the 30,000 peso travel bond she paid in 2007 so she could use it for her trip to Japan. Binay is facing graph charges at the Sandigan Bayan in connection with the purchase of 72.6 million peso worth of office furniture and fixtures in 1999. The Easter leaves are affecting the eastern section of the country. 
Pagasa says a light to moderate rains will be experienced in Cagayan Valley area. Fair weather with isolated rain showers and thunderstorms will prevail over Metro Manila and the rest of the country, but mostly in the eastern section. The maximum temperature recorded in Metro Manila has reached 34.7 degrees Celsius. Coming up, Sweden's Ice Hotel, a duplicate of the world's first hotel made of ice and snow, continues to amaze visitors from across Europe. And UNTV Cup brings hardcore to battle to the next level as it invites government officials in an off-season game in May. More from Y News after this break. Following the poaching of a rhino in France, a zoo in Czechoslovakia cuts the horn off of its first rhinoceros. Jun Garin will tell us why. A Czech zoo began the new practice of cutting the horns off of its rhinoceros on Monday, following the killing of a rare white rhino at a French zoo by poachers. The first rhino to lose its horn was Pamir, a white rhino male. Blindfolded and put under anesthesia, his horn was removed in less than an hour with a chainsaw. Po nedávných tragických událostech ve Francii, kdy v zoologické zahradě byl zastřelen nosorožec, jsme naše bezpečnostní opatření ještě zpřísnili. Kromě jich stávajících, jako jsou kamery v každém zařízení, kde chováme nosorožce, jsme přistoupili k jednomu zásadnímu řešení a to je, že u našich nosorožců odstraníme rohy. Zoo staff explained that horns are made of a similar material to people's hair and nails, and losing the matter does not affect the animal's quality of life in any way in captivity. Horns are often trimmed for health and safety reasons, and also grow back. Poachers broke into a French zoo on March 7, shot dead a rare white rhinosaurus, and swallowed off its horn. It is believed to be the first time in Europe that a rhino in captivity has been attacked and killed. Despite global trade in rhino horn being banned by a UN convention, demand for rhino horn is strong in newly affluent Asian countries such as Vietnam, where it is priced as an ingredient in traditional medicines. A kilo of rhino horn fetched 51,000 euros or 53,900 US dollars on the black market in 2015, the French zoo said in a statement. Czech's Vur Kravlov Zoo is currently home to 21 rhinos who will have their horns removed. Jun Garin, UNTV News and Rescue, Europe. International travelers at an airport in New York City had mixed opinions after the United States and Britain on Tuesday imposed restrictions on carry-on electronic devices on planes. Mari Peñaranda will tell us why. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security said passengers traveling from certain airports in Muslim-majority countries in the Middle East and North Africa could not bring devices such as tablets, portable DVD players, laptops, and cameras into the main cabin that are larger than a mobile phone. Instead, such items must be in checked in baggage. Britain took similar steps, with a spokesman for Prime Minister Theresa May saying that there would be curbs on electronic items in the main cabin on flights from six countries in the Middle East. The moves were prompted by reports that militant groups want to smuggle explosive devices such as electronic gadgets, according to U.S. officials on Monday. Officials did not explain why the restrictions only apply to travelers arriving in the United States and not for those same flights when they leave from there. There were mixed opinions about the new rules at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City. Security for some people and other people none. You know, it's not for everybody, right? And in the airplane, you have people from different uh, nationalities. So, the person who would do anything, I would, he would carry his laptop and go to different airline and do it, you know. So, I don't know who smart made this decision. There must be something, otherwise they should not take decision like this. Because it was never there before and now it is there. So, 
Me shouldn't, because I don't even carry my laptop. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't. I just carry my phone. I've got everything on my phone. The airports covered by the U.S. restrictions are in Cairo, Istanbul, Kuwait City, Doha, Qatar, Casablanca, Morocco, Amman, Jordan, Riyadh, and Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and Dubai and Abu Dhabi in United Arab Emirates. The carriers, Royal Jordanian Airlines, Egypt Air, Turkish Airlines, Saudi Arabian Airlines, Kuwait Airways, Royal Air Maroc, Qatar Airways, Emirates, and Etihad Airways have until Friday, March 24th to heed the new policy which took effect early on Tuesday and will be in place indefinitely. The policy does not affect any American carriers because none fly directly to the United States from the airports affected. Marie Peñaranda, UNTV News and Rescue, Austin, Texas. Sweden's Ice Hotel draws more tourists as it opens for public viewing this year. Jovic Bermas will tell us why. Beauty of Sweden's Ice Hotel 365, 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, amazes visitors and boosts local tourism since it's open early this year. The Ice Hotel 365 is a new attempt by its mother brand Ice Hotel, the world's first hotel made of ice and snow. Compared with other temporary hotels of its kind, the hotel is a permanent structure available all year round and has heating facilities in bathrooms. When we found out that we could make it, build it like a building that is permanent, very well insulated, so we can keep the cold inside, but then we have to have the cooling machines to keep the minus temperature. So we have a lot of solar cell panels, so actually the sun has become our friend now instead of the enemy. Arnie said the hotel covers 2,100 square meters and includes 20 guest rooms. He added, all the ice of the hotel is from the 520 kilometer Torn River nearby and the hotel cannot exist without the river. Since its founding in 1989, the Ice Hotel has brought many tourists to little Swedish village of Jukasdarvi. Apart from checking in the hotels, tourists can also experience dog sled tours and ice fishing in the village. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue, Europe. Cristiano Ronaldo adds another award to his list. Chile gears up ahead of a match against Argentina. Aaron Romero will tell us why. In soccer, the Chilean national soccer team took to the pitch in Santiago as the Cubs prepare for their World Cup qualifier against Argentina this week. The match is very important in order for Chile to stay in a safe position ahead of the qualifier. Chile will face Argentina in Buenos Aires on Thursday. The 2018 World Cup takes place in Russia beginning June 14. Meanwhile, one way, Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo was hailed as Portugal's Player of the Year in a ceremony at Estoril on Monday. Ronaldo spoke before the audience, reminding them that many had not believed the national team could win the Euro tournament. He acknowledged coach Fernando Santos, the coach of the year awardee, for convincing the players they could achieve it. Esta noite é para agradecermos não só os jogadores, a equipa técnica, mas também todos os portugueses, porque acho que eles tiveram um papel fundamental na nossa caminhada no europeu. Aaron Romero, UNTV News and Rescue, New York. Giant internet firm Facebook has launched a new fact-checking tool designed to weed out fake news stories. In the United States, Facebook has begun partnering with fact-checking website Snopes and the Associated Press to check the authenticity of stories. Some Facebook users have reported seeing a pop-up window appear when an article is disputed by a third-party fact-checkers. The pop-up says, disputed by multiple independent fact checkers. However, it does not yet appear to Facebook users in other locations. Silicon Valley is up for small consumer and commercial drones but not for delivery of goods. RJ Alavaso will tell us why. 
Silicon Valley startup Airspace System. It's among some 70 companies working on counter drone systems, has a small consumer and commercial drones proliferate, but unlike others, it aims to catch drones instead of disabling them or shooting them down. A demonstration of airspace headquarters in San Leandro, California showed a compact aircraft just a few feet wide, yet capable of sophisticated autonomous navigation and accurate targeting of drone in motion. It is still early day in drone defense business. Security professionals, both public and private, worry about dangerous drones at military site, airport, data center, and public venues like baseball stadiums, but countermeasure carries too. If the drone carries a payload like a bomb or chemical weapon, it could still fall in its target. Jamming radio signal on drones does not always work either, and fastest drone can reach 150 miles per hour too quick for human pilots flying another drones to catch. The technical challenge of safety stopping a dangerous drone appealed to Guy Bernahum, one of the inventors of the Apple iPod and the engineering brains behind airspace system. We're really making a dragonfly a hunter, right? And this is super exciting. It does it autonomously without us. Airspace system will not be selling its aircraft, but rather leasing a system, a complete with operator and mobile command center to the customer. RJ Alabaso, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. The Labrador Retriever still leads a pack of the most popular dogs in the United States. Nino Armilio will tell us why. The friendly and often clumsy Labrador Retriever has retained its long-held title as the most popular dog breed in the United States, while the fearless Rottweiler has climbed to its highest ranking in 20 years, the American Kennel Club announced on Tuesday. The nation's most sought-after dogs of 2016 were unveiled in New York City by the Purebred Dog Registry. Labrador Retrievers, commonly called Labs, have held their slot as the most popular breed for more than two decades, already making them the longest reigning leader of the pack. For 26 years in a row, the Labrador Retriever has been America's most popular dog. and They are a versatile breed. They're easy to train. They get along well with other dogs. They're super athletic. They're just, they're great in families, great with children. They're the perfect, of be best of both worlds for a small, smaller dog, but not too, too big. Um, grooming is easy, daily brushings. Um, their coat is water resistant, so mud and dirt doesn't really stick on them, which is really nice. Placing second third and fourth were the German Shepherd, Golden Retriever, and English Bulldog, respectively. Beagles were fifth most popular, while French Bulldogs placed sixth. The top six breeds remained the same as in 2015. Poodles were seventh and Rottweilers eighth, each jumping one spot higher than the last lineup. Yorkshire Terriers dropped two spots to place ninth, and Boxers held firm in the tenth spot. Once the breed is added to the list of some 200 breeds and varieties currently recognized by the club, it is eligible to compete in the prestigious Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Perhaps ironically, Westminster has never selected a Labrador Retriever as winner in the show's 141-year history. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Finally, after four attempts in the finals, the PNP responders have won the UNTV Cup Season 5 Championship title. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. Sa UNTV Cup, meron kami PNP responders. Yeah. Oh, na ilang beses nang nasilat sa championship. <laughs> Sana sila na nag-champion eh. No, yun, dahil hindi pa konsipente. Ah. <laughs> pero, pero, uh. siguruhin ko na... Yeah. The champion kami. The champion of the UNTV Cup Season 5 is the PNP! Police Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa's statement during an interview with Mr. Public Service Kuya Daniel Rason on the program Get It Straight with Daniel Rason on July 14, 2016 has come through. After their fourth time on the finals hard court of the League of Public Servants, the PNP responders have at last claimed the match coveted championship title after defeating the Malacanang Kamao in a winner-take-all match yesterday with the final scores 68-55. Uh -huh. 
of meeting three. In the first quarter of the game, the PNP dominated the Malacanang ending at 16-13. Malacanang Kamao bounced back and was able to skate the responders' tight defense to almost tie the game with 36-35 at the end of the second quarter. However, the PNP did not lose heart and led the third quarter by 9 points, 51-42. And as the last quarter came, the PNP's intense offense continued. The Cubs seemingly barricaded the paint area to prevent the Malacanang from entering it. The PNP's lead ballooned to 13 points towards the last 3 minutes and 42 seconds of the ball game. Malacanang attempted to catch up but ran out of time until the last buzzer of the game went off. Yung pangarap namin na makuha itong championship, dumating na. So, thank you very much sa, sa mga players, special players, at the same time sa, Pilipi, uh, sa PNP community. Uh, kay Coach Louis Alas, kay uh, Ronnie Sagala, okay, tsaka kay uh, Yuki uh, Kawamura. Congrats, uh, P. Congratulations, uh, Team PNP. PNP team first entered the UNTV Cup Finals in Season 1 against the Judiciary Magis. They returned to the final series playing against two-time champion AFP Cavaliers in Seasons 2 and 4. The PNP's campaign towards this final series has not been easy. They had to beat two-time champion Judiciary Magis in the semi-finals who had the twice the beat advantage. Sa wakas, na na wala na lahat, lahat ng struggles, lahat ng paghihirap. Parang biglang bumabalik sa akin pero ang saya. Parang tatanim ko sa puso ko yan. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. In May, government officials will have their chance in the UNTV Cup's off-season game. Joe Anano will tell us why. UNTV Cup will be launching off-season games where various executive, legislative, and judiciary officials will battle on the hard court. Among the competing teams in the off-season games are the Senate Defenders, the BOC Transformers, the Judiciary Magis, the AFP Cavaliers, and the PNP Responders. UNTV Cup Commissioner Atoy Ko says the new off-season games will be more exciting because the games will feature selected officials 40 years old and above. Yun limang team na to lang ang sinali namin kasi uh, sila na lang talaga ang meron nag-submit ng tamang requirement na na lahat board and above, mag-executive lahat, ang salary rate matataas. The UNTV Cup off-season games will commence in May and will run for two months. Meanwhile, expect more exciting hard court action and possible entries of new teams into the UNTV Cup Season 6. The UNTV Cup management hopes for continuous support and cooperation from various government agencies with the objective of serving the people and help those in need. Mr. Public Service Kuya Daniel Razon says there may be more charitable institutions that will receive help in the coming season because bigger prizes await the winning teams for their chosen beneficiaries. No, from the start uh, ng ating uh, liga na ito, talagang paangat ng paangat. So we cannot uh, expect for less. Ano? Uh, with God's uh, help, ay, uh, talagang uh, pataas ng pataas yung level nitong ating uh, nagiging uh, uh, laban dito sa ating UNTV Cup. Uh, siguro, by the time na nag-season 6 tayo, God willing, after ng off-season natin, ay talagang uh, mas uh, ibibigay pa ng iba't ibang mga teams yung kanilang best. John Nano, UNC Venus and Rescue, Quezon City. Those are the reasons behind the news, March 22, 2017. Evangelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver it to you as they unfold. I'm Darlene Basingan. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why News?
Service Channel. Ang susunod na programa ay rated PG. Ito ay nangangailangan ng patnubay at gabay ng magulang para sa mga batang manunood. Of God heal. Walang napakagandang pamumuhay sa mundo. Pinapumuhay kang may patayan. One of the most important things in life is to know the essence of living. Let us